Hello, welcome to the Unity Cinemachine tutorial number one, basic cinematic setup with some timeline and character stuff. Okay, so we got a basic Unity scene here. Let's go to the Asset Store, let's get Cinemachine. You just simply type it in, it's free, find it in the Asset Store, click Import, and there you got Cinemachine. The next step, we're going to load the post-processing stack because they work really nicely together, so just type that in, hit Import, there you go. Thirdly, we're going to import the Atom character assets. And these are really beautiful assets um, with uh, from the Atom short film. And they're coming into Unity, and here you go. So, once we have all these assets together and imported into Unity, we're going to go to the Cinema Machine, and we're going to say Create Virtual Camera. You can see it creates a virtual camera. There's all the goodies on the side. We'll get into that more in a sec. And then what you'll see is on the main camera, we created something called the Cinemachine Brain. This is what controls everything. Okay, I'm gonna blow that camera away. We're gonna create an empty object. And this is gonna be where we hold the timeline. And there's a number of different ways you can do this, but this is the way I like to do it. Just create an empty object, call it a timeline. And with the timeline window open, you hit Create, and you create the timeline asset. Put it somewhere that makes sense. And then what you'll see is you've created a timeline and it lives on that timeline walk asset, that empty asset. Okay, so let's go to the Atom folder, grab Atom, we'll just drop him into the scene. And now we've got Atom in the scene, we'll position him. I've put a little checkerboard on the floor just so it's easier to see motion. And move the camera around. Okay, you can see the timeline window is uh, turned off, so when you click on your asset, click the little lock button there, and it will keep the timeline window open. So you drag the Atom asset in, you say you want to make an animation track. Right clip, make an animation clip. Pick from the animations that are in the scene. We're going to pick the atom walk. And that quickly, you've got a character now animating in timeline with a nice little clip. Super fast, really fast to get characters going. Now, if you grab the clip on the top, on the right side, and you drag it out, it will loop. This is a looping animation, so you can loop this as long as you want. And he's just going to keep walking. He's got a root offset, he'll just keep walking into infinity. Okay, so that's cool, but there's no cameras. So let's make a Cinemachine camera. So we're going to go up to the top window, and we're going to say... We're going to drag the main camera into the timeline, and we're going to make a Cinemachine shot track. There it is right there. I've just moved it to the top. And then if you right click in that track, you can make a Cinemachine shot clip. This is a camera. And on the inspector window, you can see it says create camera. So we've just made a new camera here. And that camera is inside that shot clip. And there it is in the world, just at zero, zero, pointing at nothing. So I'm going to just move it out so we get a little bit better view. This isn't a smart camera yet. This is just a dumb zombie camera in the world not doing anything yet. So we'll get a little shot. There we go. So let's make that clip bigger so we can see a little last longer. Now, let's make this a smart camera. So let's go into the Atom character. We can open up the bones. We can see each one. You can drag any object into the Cinemachine Look At. So just select the clip and drag a bone in and put it into Look At. So now Cinemachine is looking at the character Spine 1. And you can see as the character moves, the camera turns works backwards too. You can grab the camera and move the camera around and it's always going to give you that shot. Now if you look, there's three things on the screen. There's a red window, red overlay, like a blue overlay, and this little white section in the middle. And that's the dead zone. And you've got damping controls which show how um, aggressively the camera will follow. So let's look at the dead zone for a second. See this? Disregards all motion inside that. You can make this dead zone any size you want. But any, any animation inside that zone, the camera will disregard. So look, if I make it super horizontal, watch this. Totally disregards all that until it gets to the edge. And then it won't pull the camera over. So watch. Zero camera behavior until that target hits the blue. And then it moves over. And the camera will track to keep that yellow dot inside the blue section. We've got zero dampening. That's why it's a really hard... Uh, like a hard stop when the yellow hit it. So 
you can also drag this around on screen like just now I was doing it with the sliders in the inspector window but you can just click and drag in the window it's that easy to like move around shots and get the shot composition that you'd like okay so that's cool you can see how that works moving things around so now what we're going to do is we're going to play with the damping a little bit so right now it's set to zero you can see we can bias the screen width too side to side just the same as doing it in the window okay the way the damping works is the camera will have a bit of lag which is realistic because cameras do lag cameramen don't know exactly what someone's going to do plus they weigh something so there's a little acceleration a little deceleration so see this we've got like two seconds let's change it horizontally there's four seconds of dampening and look at this see that yellow yellow target it's squishing into the blue a little bit See, so the camera starts tracking, and it's going to take, you know, four seconds for the camera to follow, to catch back up, approximately. The numbers aren't, don't get your stopwatch out, but that's, that's approximately how it works. So when I stop, there's four seconds for the camera to follow. So we can set that to be a different number. You can see now it's pushing quite far into the blue. And that's the lag, and that's the weight, and that's the believability of the camera performance. There's a lot of mojo here with the math, trying to get that to feel just right. And the red, well, the red will mean that the target cannot go past that. So it's like a hard wall. And that's a good thing to have sometimes if you want to have the camera have a bit of lag, but you want to make sure it never leaves the frame. You don't have to have it on, you can move it outside the frame, but that's what it does, you can see little yellow dot squishing into the blue, but it's going to hit the red and it's going to stop and it's going to pull the camera around. So between all those different settings, you can actually come up with a lot of really sophisticated camera behaviors. You can see it works while I'm playing, when I'm in edit mode, everything's saved, even when you're in play mode. You can just drag in the window, move stuff around. Really easy to use. Okay, so let's check that bone. Let's move up. Let's get a different bone. We're in his neck. Open his neck up a little bit. Let's target his head bone. Snap. You can target any object in the Unity scene. You can easily, with a very little bit of code, you can dynamically populate that. And you can change the targets on the fly. Okay, so let's play that now. Something to note that one of the few things that Cinemachine doesn't save and play mode is, is a bone reorder. So I just had to go back and change it back to his head. That's one of the very, very few things that doesn't get saved in, in play mode. Okay, so we're targeting his head. You can move the camera around. You can see the camera's still going to get that shot, no matter if the subject's moving or if the camera's moving. If you move the camera manually, if you use timeline to animate the camera, if you have gameplay elements moving the camera, it doesn't care. So the machine's always going to try to keep that shot that you've defined. Okay, so I just made a second shot here. And I'm going to target something. Uh, we're going to target his head bone with a second shot. And we're also going to follow it. And this is using the transposer, which is a, a procedural follow system. So you can see we're on shot one, we cut to shot two, and now the camera's following this guy. So let's open up the body, you can see we're like minus 10. And this is the distance back, so we're now minus 1.77 meters, we pick the height. We can have damping per axis for how aggressively the camera follows, you can have a little bit of lag. Change the composition. We've now created this follow camera. Let's move it back just a little bit more, get the right shot. Okay, change the composition, get a little bit lower. So no matter where this guy is, no matter what he's doing, the camera's always gonna be this far behind him. So we've got this shot, and then we cut, boom. We're now following. Okay, let's move that clip back. And we're about to show you one of the most powerful, and I think one of the funnest features in Cinemachine, working with timeline, is the, the blending. So I'm gonna position the first shot, so the character wipes past the screen at this point in time. So watch this, we hit play, we're tracking the guy, he starts to wipe past the screen, 
and then we do this cut to the follow shot. Okay, that's cool. It's a pretty jarring cut though, so watch this. You can see the camera on the left, it's targeting the guy, we got a cut coming up, and you can see the thrust and change, and the Cinema Machine debug shows you that we've cut to the second camera. Okay, watch this. So we're going to find the bit where he wipes the screen, which is about here. And we're going to overlap the clips. See that overlap, that diagonal line? That's a transition. It's going to blend all the math from camera A to camera B, even though they're totally different cameras. One's a tripod camera with a fluid head, and the next one's a like a dolly, I mean like a steady cam follow shot. So watch this. We're following in one. There's the camera. We hit the blend, and look at this. You can see the camera blend to the second shot. Both cameras are going. The transition will do a very buttery, seamless blend between the two. Look at that. You can see the camera move. And we've now blended right into the side shot. The, sorry, the track shot. What's interesting is you can scrub, and you can position the playhead in between and the camera will show you what the position is. So see how the camera comes backwards a little bit? I don't really like that. So I can tune this blend so the camera doesn't actually come backwards. I just want the, the, the follow camera to kind of pick it up. So it's still coming back a little bit, but not bad. Not bad. So we can just tune that overlap. And you can do this in, uh, in edit mode. And you can see, watch this. Now we blend. The camera kind of goes to the side. Boom. And then we pick up with a follow shot. We hope you make some really awesome things. Stay tuned. This is the first tutorial out of many. And the next one, we're going to get into more advanced features. So be sure to hit the forums, too. We've got a really active forums on the Unity forum page. Just search Cinemachine on the forums. And if you have any questions or feature requests or feedback, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We get back to you as fast as we can. Thank you so much. Bye.